Hi, HP Microsoft. In this video I will try and show you what I think about an HP Microsoft and uh, what I decided to install on it to monitor my network, my Cisco devices and so on. Uh, let's start with some uh, background. So I bought this server a year ago and I have uh, not had any issues with that so that is something I can really recommend. I paid 200 pounds for it but HP offered a 100 pound cashback. So literally the price was 100 pounds and as far as I know uh, it's still the case so you can uh, claim 100 pounds so that is a great deal. I added 8 gigabytes of RAM and one hard drive so I could mirror my system and I will show it to you in a sec. So the total was 350 pounds and I received 100 pounds uh, from HP. All you have to do is uh, fill a form and send it to them. Three weeks later you should receive a check from HP. Simple and easy. All you have to remember is to buy it from an HP reseller. Uh, do not buy it on eBay or something like that because uh, probably HP will not uh, will not give you any money for that. So I used ebuyer.com by the way. Okay, so that's uh, that's the story. And uh, as I said, I have been using it for more than a year, and uh, I've been very happy with that, and I am very happy. Uh, so let's start with my right controller. That's what I want to show you and a recommend you should put on this server. I can minimize it for a while. Okay, I bought two, well I bought one hard drive and I mirrored it. So the physical view allows you to see there are two hard drives and the logical view because it's a hardware RAID you can see RAID 1, that's mirror functional, it's good, 250 gigabytes okay I recommend you should uh, install this application from from HP uh, website or AMD uh, it will allow you to see what's going on with your hard drive and uh, once a month you should check and make sure that your write is uh, okay. Something that uh, you have probably noticed uh, CPU utilization, okay? It's not the fastest uh, server in the world, okay? So I cannot recommend it for a small company. Uh, as you can see, in, in my situation, CPU is around 50-60%. Uh, all the time really. Uh, I've got a few applications running in the background but still you know it's not a production server, it's my home server so I do not use it during the day and um, it's, uh, it's it's quite busy. Okay so that's why I decided to go for 8 gigabytes of RAM uh, so the server can you know breathe and uh, work much faster. And of course it's SBS 2008 paid a lot of money for the license by the way if you go for a home server or a Linux uh, it should be a little faster than that okay so uh, the first thing I want to show you is my TFTP server okay I use the server as a TFTP server okay uh, what I uh, what I what I use here is uh, TFTP D64 you can go and Google for that, that's an excellent application by the way. And uh, I can uh, copy my running config to this server. So I will show it to you from my ASA. from run to TFTP. Of course you can use 
an archive command and uh, do it and your uh, devices will do it for you uh, running config is 172.16.1.2 ASA 5545 backup okay so that's what uh, what you can do and it's a great way to uh, to create a backup of your devices and that's what uh, what I do uh, once a week for instance okay second of all what I want to show you is this application wake on LAN okay magic packet sender there are a lot of applications that's what I use uh, it allows me to wake up to turn on my PC uh, so the way it works I if I want to connect to my PC first I use my ASA to VPN in then I RDP to this server and the last thing I do, I click send, and it will wake my PC up, okay? And thanks to that, I can RDP to it, or VNC to it, and so on. Okay, a great application. Allows you to turn your PC remotely. Uh, antivirus, I'm using Trend. It was not easy to find an application for an SBS server that would be cheap. Uh, a lot of companies will charge you, most companies will charge you a lot because it's a server version of Microsoft uh, OS and Trend they had a great deal. I'm very happy with that because it covers my exchange as well. Uh, so it's uh, it's a really nice uh, application. Okay, as you can see it's even updating at the moment. Uh, I have not had any issues with that. There was a small problem but uh, the support team was great, so I can recommend it if you if you decide to go for a, a Microsoft uh, server like 2008 or 2012. Uh, the deal is uh, is really good. Okay. The next thing that I want to show you is PRTG. Okay. So I use it as my PRTG uh, server. Okay. And I will show it to you from my uh, from my uh, second PC. Let me just move the window. Yeah. Okay. Plug in. Okay. So basically, I added three devices: my ASA, my access point, and my second firewall. The most important thing for me is uh, to monitor my interfaces, that's inside, outside and inside. So when I click on it, I can click live data and you will see when I remove this and that, that my internet connection is pretty busy because I'm using iDrive to, uh, to back up my files at the moment. So uh, you can you can use PRTG to see that and of course see what has been happening in the last 365 days. Yeah, So it's a great tool. If you want to add a new sensor, because I've seen a lot of questions, you go to sensors, add sensor. You can add it to an existing device or create a new one. Let's just use that one. And then here is a list of uh, sensors. And, uh, uh, you just have to look for the one that you want. So, for instance, uptime, Oops. and that's the one you want to use. Okay, very simple, and it's the same on all your devices. SNMP configuration is very, very easy. So, a piece of cake, and uh, it will allow you to monitor your uh, devices. Okay, I use this. Uh, server as a Kiwi as, as a Kiwi server as a syslog server I use Kiwi and uh, again a lot of questions on the internet how to set up your device to support that to send messages show it to you on my access point Okay, and that's what you can see. I'm sending my 
logs to 172.16.1.2 and of course you can tweak it you can uh, uh, make sure that uh, you will know the time and time and date and so on but the basic command is here okay very very easy and it's good to have a syslog server because you can look at it once a week and um, see what's going on uh, I recommend uh, a Kiwi server uh, it's a free application uh, as well or you can pay to get some extra features okay backup okay I use this server as a backup server that's a great thing and a lot of people are interested in that so first of all uh, this server uh, has its own application Windows Server Backup so I, I bought a USB drive and uh, every day it goes and uh, creates a backup second of all what I am using is SyncPack Pro okay there is a f I think there is a freeware version but I decided to, to pay off pay and buy a license because I needed some uh, more features okay and what it does it goes to my main PC once a week okay as you can see it's scheduled uh, to run in three days and uh, it will uh, sync it will check if there were any updates in these five folders okay so that's my EFTP, CCNA, Outlook, emails, my download folder and my second download folder with some images okay and uh, thanks to that uh, I know that I've got a backup and uh, second of all what I do I use iDrive here to move to, to copy all these files to the cloud okay it's really important to have a backup okay if something goes wrong and especially to keep it off site okay that's why I decided to go for iDrive so I can copy it by the way a, a really good application not uh, expensive service uh, and again something I can recommend okay to summarize the only problem is here okay as you can see 77 92% CPU utilization uh, it's not a server that uh, can run uh, Windows Server 2008 for 20 users with Exchange and uh, Hyper-V and so on okay it's a great home server uh, but you should know that uh, the speed of the CPU and all components, it's not the fastest server in the world, okay? But I paid £100 for that, so as a home server, it's a great, great solution, okay? Any questions, let me know, and I will be very happy to help. Thank you very much.